Hello YouTube fans, here again. And as I'm doing the eighties marathon and I'm doing nineteen eighty one, why not this one? Why not this one? That being um if you remember right there, my bloody father time. That's why right, my bloody father time. Now my bloody father time, as people may or may not know, was Epidy Cut. When it first came out, it was the most epic fucking cut censored slasher horror movie to come out in 1981 it really was it was a big deal in 81 you no know, you had the burning you had the power you had halloween 2 you had five to the 13 part 2 you name it you had it and this had to be the most finest of that era but over this we've now managed to see the uncut my bloody father time you can see where the cuts originally were. There's bits where the film is deteriorated, and I mean, I've got it, I've got it. But how do it do? I don't I like it that way. I like it because you know it gives it a, an old stool sort of feel. So it starts off with this couple are making out in a mind, and for some reason the the dad's still got his welding mask on. You see, she's got a tattoo of a love heart on her tit. Pusses are and on the uncut one you see a lot more traffic and that's why I like my bloody father time That's why I like it. It has a bit of meat to the feds I also like the characters in it. You know what I mean? A lot of characters your typical down-to-earth characters what work in a mind And you've got one lad with his dear friend. He's trying to make it out on his own and he failed right and his mates with which with what's now to be his ex friend out of luck, he gets a back. He got this idea that there was a killer originally, and he went around killing people. He wore a welding mast. And um, at first, he got this cop, and he's time to toss. He think they found a box of top to get by the time today and all that slop. Long behold, they find an art with a bloody art to it. You know, it's got a and that it's got blood in it and that's when they realise the murders are gonna happen again. And that's why I like the uncut one. You know, you've got one woman who runs away, the killer drags her by her hair, doesn't dip a fuck, drags her by the hair. You don't actually see the death scene in it, but you do see the aftershots. And an uncut one, the cop, the one I just mentioned, finds the body all burnt up, really juicy, really juicy. So it does have a lot of good juice and deaths, but the best death scene, the best fucking death scene has to be one scene in it. Got a couple making out, right? And the lad goes off to get some cans of beer. The killer comes in, gets the dirt, drags it by her face. Turns this one, you don't see it, but on the uncut one, you see a lot more, it's dragging her. Rams the fucking back of her head for a fucking pipe. Blood comes out of a fucking dob, out of a dosset. Beautiful, just fucking beautiful. I also like one death scene here. You've got this one guy, Dan reminds me a bit of um, Tracy Ralph. Well, he's not as fucking annoying. He's a guy that works in a pub and he's having a go at these these people for having a laugh and talking about having Father Times Day. You get a bit of memory lane of what happened and um, so on. It's to do with this guy. He worked on a mind and. Um, it actually got blowing up and the high up people left to go to a Faritans party and this guy was buried alive, sent him mad. Most of the people were dead, he dissolved the cannibalism, come back a couple of years later and started killing the ones that left him. So he got the idea that's who they're killing this. So this guy works in the pub, he's playing a stupid joke to make it look like it's the killer, opens the door, the killer really comes out, rams her up through his neck and one pops out of his eyeball. Do a bit of like that death. My other favourite death is to see where he dies making hot dogs and the killer gets him, slams his face in boiling water. I think in the uncut one you definitely see it and all. So there's a few good deaths. But the one I always remember is the look in the mouth. And there's one where a guy gets shot in the head with these fucking dart guns. So I will do it, it's too. I will do it, it's too. And um, so all the way through the film, they think it's this one guy who's doing the murders, right? And he's fighting the guy, and this way get a twist ending because it's not the it's not the killer who they thought it was. He died this and years ago. It turned out to be 
a long lad who was the day's boyfriend before she got back with her boyfriend without being confusing and it turns out he was the one he actually was when he was a kid he saw his father get killed by that killer and it sent him leave below so he started thinking he was the killer again there's a good scene where he saws his hand off you think because he the, the mind dashes in then he runs off and he says i'm gonna come back i'm tearing this fucking place apart Happy Valentine's Day! You know, your typical sequel bay ending. It never got to be a sequel. There was a remake as this went on. It's there. It's all right. If you could do some death scenes in it, it's typical 3D dimmicks what were around at that time. But compared to the one in 1981, I felt that had a lot more puns to it. It definitely wasn't a fade. It definitely was graphic. It's like I said, over the days, we had the censored one. If you can ever get the uncut one, I would check out My Bloody Father Time. Demi has a lot more puns and Demi has a lot more meat to the fucking bone. A lot more meat. But it's a good one in 81. You know what I mean? It was an era when Slasher films come out. And I like to say, I like the characters in it. The down to earth, the funner. It's not like it gets sad when one gets killed. But at the same time, that's what you're going for in a Slasher film. That's what you're going for. So, that's like I say, you get a bit of ending music. The music's a little bit cheapy at the ending. You get like a bit of country songs of it, but it's not a bad one from 1981. You know what I mean? At that time, there was making it in with films that say like the Friday the 13th, the sequel to fucking Halloween, and so on. So, they decided to make making in for Father Time. So, they did My Bloody Father Time. Like I say, it had a lot of bad publicity being on the most violent slasher films without repeating myself it was heavily censored and it was cut for fucking this for this and i'm both happy that paramount finally decided to sew it they got shit at the time and remember right on dvd they got a shit because they were sewing the uncut one oh dear me smack on the hands and his own blood in door it was like come on i felt myself that I felt myself, my bloody father time, the uncut one, had a lot more me. I've seen the censored one, not that day. There's a good scene in it where the characters are going up these ladders, thinking they're going to get away from the killer, right? And then the, this guy gets hung up by a rope and he rips his fucking head off. Blood just comes dusting out and splashes on the woman's face. And you know what? Without sounding like I'm fucked up, I love it. I thought that had a bit more meat to it. So, I mean, I don't like it. There's bits where the film's deteriorated. Like I said, to repeat myself. And you can tell all that's where the cuts were. You know, like, spiced them back in. But, again, I sort of like that. I like it because it has that old school sort of feel. And, I was, like I say, it's a good look, a bit of an expense. A bit of a tiss. You get a little bit of a love story. It's just, like, typical of them sort of films. But if you're going into it for Blood and Door, I would definitely, definitely check out My Bloody Father Time, the uncut one. Into them. Be smart, be safe. At the time of the other marathon. Into them. See you later.